On tonight's CTV News, we've updates on the Cathedral, Phillipstown School and the fate of the Majestic Theatre. Elsewhere, Cancern has launched a scheme of free temporary repairs to get people through winter and our community leaders have reached burnout. This is CTV News, I'm Grant Mangan. Education Minister Hikia Parata isn't planning for an irreversible merger ahead of a High Court challenge by Phillipstown School. On Wednesday, the Education Minister announced the school would merge with Woolston School from January 2015. Phillipstown School is challenging Education Minister Hikia Parata's decision through the High Court for a second time now. Last October, Justice John Fogarty ruled Hikia Parata's consultation and her initial decision was unlawful. Her lawyers have agreed to delay the appointment of the change manager till the end of July. If the challenge isn't heard and a High Court judgment isn't made by then, the Minister may give another extension. Phillipstown's lawyer, May Shen, says the merger has been officially gazetted, but it can always be revoked. The Education Minister's spokeswoman says other merger plans will push on, but nothing is irreversible. The Minister says in no way was it a delay or deferment of the actions. They're still pushing for January 2015. A change manager who works with families and pupils in seeing them through the process won't be appointed till after any possible judicial review. Advertising for a new principal and setting up an establishment board will continue as planned. Government officials are keen to gain information on the costs of restoring Christchurch Cathedral. The building's fate is still up in the air three years after being damaged in the February 2011 earthquake. The Anglican Diocese hopes to construct a new church in Cathedral Square, while others want the cathedral restored. The Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority, which gave a Section 38 demolition notice in October 2011, yesterday admitted it is seeking further information regarding the notice. A spokesman for the diocese says it hasn't provided any information to Sarah and has referred the organisation to details on its website. Sarah Implementation Deputy Executive Warwick Isaacs says the request, including prices, is to bring its file up to date and isn't unusual. The diocese estimates state restoration will cost between $104 million and $221 million. This contrasts with the Great Christchurch Building Trust figures of $67 million. Two cases brought by the cathedral's owners, the Church Properties Trust, will be made to the High Court on the 28th of April. They're hoping to have a stay of demolition lifted, allowing them to start deconstructing the cathedral to a height of about 3 metres. They will also challenge an earlier ruling stating the church shouldn't have spent insurance money on the transitional cardboard cathedral. The demolition of the Majestic Theatre isn't seen as a losing battle. The council and community groups are fighting to keep it and won't stop until it's reduced to rubble. The Christchurch City Council is pulling out all their stops to halt demolition of the Majestic Theatre. The Christchurch Central Development Unit started pulling the Heritage Building down at the end of March. But the theatre has the backing of the local council and community. The Christchurch City Council are exploring if it has the grounds to seek an interim injunction to stop demolition, or whether there's a case for a judicial review of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority's power to demolish the building under the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act. Mark Isaacs, who's the director of the CCDU, sent a letter to the Christchurch City Council, reassuring them he'd never made the decision lightly or in haste. He took into consideration that following the earthquake, a reasonable amount of the building needed to be demolished, as well as the $18 million price tag to restore the building. But the council's persistence to save the theatre has torn council members. Councillor Jamie Goff isn't convinced the council would win and doesn't want to tie up ratepayers' money on lost causes, while Yanni Johansson is pushing for the council to do all they can. Cancern is spearheading a scheme to give people free approved temporary repairs to houses to get people through this winter. The Earthquake Collective says the Find and Fix program won't affect homeowners' final settlements or temporary accommodation allowance. With many homes still to receive earthquake repairs, some are exposed to weather and are unable to be locked or made secure. Leanne Curtis of Cancern says their new scheme will address these issues. The idea is that we're looking to find any of those people that have got earthquake related damage that uh, need temporary repairs because their place is either not weather tight or they've got issues with sanitation, sewer, sewer and things like that. Mrs Curtis says it's all about helping people get through the coming winter. It's quite a long time for some people before they're going to get fully reinstated in their house and we decided come winter uh, everybody should at least have had 
a good temporary fix to make sure the house was warm, dry, safe, secure. The Cancun spokeswoman says so far, people haven't been making temporary repairs due to financial blocks. Financial blocks which the find and fix scheme will hopefully remove. This has been about taking the barriers away. So it doesn't come off your accommodation, it doesn't come off your final settlement, it doesn't in fact cost the homeowner anything to get the temporary repair done. So now we're into uh, spreading the word really. Red Cross will be on a door knocking campaign in targeted areas. A number of groups are backing the project, including SERA, Christchurch City Council, EQC, the Canterbury Earthquake Appeal Trust and Community Energy Action. Leanne Curtis says they just don't know how many people out there are in need of repairs, and this should help track them down. But really, it, we've got no idea. We might find 90, we might find 900, and we might hopefully not find you know, more than that. So the idea is find them all. Leanne Curtis says even though it might not be you with the problem, it could be your friend, neighbour or a family member. She advises anyone in need of help to call 0800 233 551. That's 0800 233 551. Patrick Phelps, CTV News. There was an unlucky start to the day for a local bar after a driver smashed into the front of their premises. Emma Cropper has the story. It wasn't a lucky start to the day for the owner of the crack. In the last 10 years I've had three cars go through the front door of three different pubs of mine, the Rose and Thistle in Papua Nui, Trevino's just further down the road here on Rickerton Road, and now the crack, so um, they say lightning never strikes twice, but three times, pretty incredible, huh? The bar security footage shows this car smash into the front of his bar and then rapidly take off. The driver lost control in the rain on Straven Road and didn't hang around to check the damage. Image. Pretty unbelievable. Um, I would have thought that that's probably answerable in some way legally. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty unbelievable that he could do it. No one was injured. The incident happened in the early hours of the morning. Only a few patrons were around and staff were closing up. Pretty frightening stuff, you know. It's uh, really unfortunate, but very unfortunate that no one was hurt. The damaged window is being boarded up in time for the Irish pub to open its doors tonight. Emma Cropper, CTV News. <laughs> Coming up, our city's community leaders are burning out. I'm Chris Lynch. Join me for CTV's new current affairs show, Lynched, every Monday at 8.30 right here on CTV, where I talk to the decision makers and those responsible for running our city. Action Removals, offering short or long-term storage facilities, full packing services, comprehensive rates, all fully insured and with six vehicle sizes to choose from. Earthquake Repairs, Action Removals, pack, move, store and return your valuable possessions stress-free. Action Removals, a family business that has been operating in Christchurch for over 10 years. Action Removals, your one-stop removal service on time, every time. 0800 222 526. Get rid of that damaging and unsightly moss, mould and lichen from your path, drive or roof with Mossbuster. Mossbuster is a no-bleach, non-abrasive, biodegradable solution that has over 35 years of proven results. Mossbuster costs less than half the price of other well-known products and can be yours for less than a dollar a litre. You just spray it on and let Mother Nature do the rest. Check out our website to find the best solution to your moss, mould and grime problem. Order online or call us now on 0800 881000. Our new companion package is a personalised service for those that need extra help and support. A cost effective solution for someone who needs more than just a taxi driver. Our drivers are handpicked from our experienced team and specialise in providing the right support and companionship. Home safe every time with Blue Star Taxis. Christchurch has its very own enchanted utopia. The Hitching Post. Pop in and see for yourself. A magical assortment of handmade creations, custom-made candles and artwork. Choose from our huge range of water features, garden art and imported giftware. Specialists in handcrafted metal artwork made in store. Nestled on 722 Marshlands Road. The Hitching Post. Defining art our way. Drive It takes us on a ride to showcase the new arrivals to the motoring sphere, comparing and testing the latest models to discover the best. 
Drive It, Sunday afternoons at 12.30, right here on CTV. Community leaders are burning out, according to one leader in the eastern suburbs. Reverend Mark Gibson says he's not surprised that going into the fourth year on from a natural disaster, some leaders are hitting the wall. Disaster hit Christchurch when the September 2010 and February 2011 earthquake struck. More than three years on, and Mark Gibson says work in restoring our suburbs and communities is taking its toll on our leaders. I've really noticed in the last month or two that a number of community leaders that I work closely with, that I highly respect and value, have suddenly hit the wall, are having to take sick leave, they're off work, um, seeing their doctors on depressant, antidepressants. When Mr Gibson says leaders, he means heads of groups and organisations across the board. But I'm talking about people involved in local politics, I'm talking about people involved in um, organisations that have emerged since the earthquake, trying to lead creative new directions and bring about change in the city. Last year, CTV spoke to Reverend Mike Coleman when he stepped down from his role as an advocate for Weekend. At the time, he said it was about being realistic with how much he could take on. It's been two and a half years since I started this um, job as spokesperson for Weekend, and a lot of people don't realise that I work full time as a school counsellor, a uh, high school teacher, and a, an Anglican priest. And after doing so many emails every night for the last two and a half years, um, you just realise that there's only so much you can do. And Mark Gibson says he knows what it's like to reach the end of his tether. At the end of last year I was exhausted and I suddenly realised that I needed to um, do something about it or I may well have been one of the ones that hit the wall as well. Mr Gibson says he'd like to see more support and resource given to community leaders. I think every organisation needs to, to look at how they're staffing, whether they're understaffed, overstaffed, how they look after their staff better. When we spoke to Mike Coleman in December, he admitted all his work was a labour of love. Weekend doesn't have a bank account. I've done all this on voluntary time. Never, um, I've spent my own money on everything I'm doing. So we've had nothing to gain out of this apart from really trying to, to do our best for people. Mr Gibson says actions need to be taken before mental health issues arise. Patrick Phelps, CTV News. It's Tire Awareness Week, which I have to admit was a new one on me. Fortunately though, we sent Emma Cropper along to a local service station to help check motorists' tyres. It's one of the main reasons a car fails its warrant. Too flat, too bald, too old. Tyres aren't always in the condition they should be. So if you get down to a bare tyre, you're pretty much skating on ice. This is the first time New Zealand is rolling out tyre awareness a week, setting checkpoints up around local service stations for motorists. The point of it all, to make sure tyres are roadworthy and teach drivers how to keep on top of it. Lauren Calden was one of the first heading through this morning and remained confident. Well the car's just had a warrant so I should be OK but the, I don't know, it all depends, they'll tell me when I go through. But after driving forward, she found out they weren't perfect. 34. So a little bit high on this one, so they were a little bit all over the place. A wake-up call of how quickly wear and tear on tyres can add up. Now I know I can get it all sorted and get them to the right temperature, well, the right uh, gauge that they're supposed to be. And Christchurch's bumpy cranked roads don't help. I mean, you, one minute you've got smooth roads, next minute you've got a pothole. So the, the roads in Christchurch since the earthquakes have been very, very hard on cars. And I jumped into the testing pit to check out exactly how quick and easy checking your tyres can be. It can be done in three simple steps. First, all you have to do is open your front door here and this sweet little sticker down here has your tyre pressure. So first up we're looking at these two numbers here, your 220 on this car and 200, which is your rear tyre and your front tyre. So once we've got our tyre pressure off the door, we come over here and the car needs to be a PSI of 38. So pretty easy, just click that. Grab the hose, which is your last step, pop it on the tyre and your ear just goes straight into it like that and ready to go. But there's just one message for road users. But I think really it's a question of if you're, if you're around and you've got an opportunity to check your tyres, do it once a month. At the end of the day, it could save your life or it could save the life of someone else. A simple way to keep roads safe. Emma Cropper, CTV News.
And actually, in addition to checking um, the tyre pressure, you might check the alignment because that can affect the wear and tear um, on the actual rubber on the tyre on the as well, and actually your, your road holding. The only reason I know this, of course, is because my tyres need realigning. The quality of rural waterways is a hot topic not only in Canterbury but throughout New Zealand. Patrick Phelps spoke to a man who believes a waterway bordering his farm has remained pristine despite agriculture in the area intensifying. Chris Allen lives and works here in Mid Canterbury. Boyer's stream runs right past his farm and its tributaries run through intensive farmland. He goes as far to say the water is pristine, despite intensified farming in recent decades. Over the last 20 years in particular there's been a huge amount of intensification, a lot on the back of irrigation and just low prices for sheep and beef. There's more farming has gone, when we talk about intensification, it's also um, dairy support. He says in this water, you'll find a running record of good environmental practices. Effluent shouldn't actually be featuring in any part of this water because it's, it's managed, it's put on through um, high-tech irrigators, mostly all pivots. The advantage of pivot irrigation is it gives control over when paddocks are watered in relation to when they're fertilised. Nutrients only leach when paddocks are wet, but with pivots, far greater coordination is achieved than with other forms of irrigation, rotorainers for example. With regard to dairying, Chris Allen says the conversions in the area have all been recent and therefore done properly. Where there's been uh, new dairy farms um, brought online, we'd have to say they've been done with state-of-the-art um, systems, um, whether it be dairy effluent or whether it be f fencing off waterways, these farms have pretty much been done in the last 10 to 15 years. So technologies of, and um, regulation um, have all been adopted at a very, very high level. There are plenty of invertebrae in the river. You may not be able to see them on camera, but when picking up any rock I found caddisfly and mayfly larvae, species very susceptible to poor water quality. Cows aren't the only animals that give off waste. There are other creatures affecting water quality you won't find around here. There's very little bird life in this particular river. If we look at the Ashburton River, further down, we've got the seagulls, we've got Canadian geese, we've got all sorts, and they are all just doing what birds do um, on the gravel, basically making a big festering mess. He credits the state of the stream to the efforts of Fonterra and DRNZ in conjunction with regulation from Environment Canterbury. He says he just wants some numbers to back up the visual evidence. The only thing I'm waiting for at the moment is to, for Environment Canterbury to come out and actually start doing some sampling of the water just to back up what we're seeing visually with the water quality. When I challenged him, he was happy to put his money or water where his mouth is. Neither of us have had any signs of poor health yet. Here essentially, as far as you can see, is a clean river. Do you think in any way this is a message to farmers elsewhere where perhaps rivers aren't as good and maybe their practices aren't as good and they need to change them? I think um, showcasing any river that's in great condition is great for a whole community to look at. But yeah, farmers, we need to actually go out and look and see what a pristine river looks like and actually see what those numbers actually mean. And then um, if there's something that we're falling a bit short on, we need to take action. Chris Allen says while some farmers affect the environment, this means they have a big effect when they change their practices. Patrick Phelps, CTV News. Well, I admire Patrick's courage in drinking the water. I just hope we do see him here in the newsroom next week. Still to come, the sport, traffic and weather updates. Coming up next week on Lynch, Labour's housing spokesperson Phil Twyford will join me. That's Lynched CTV 8.30 on Monday. Hurst Auto Dismantlers, your one-stop shop for all your mechanical and car part needs. Our huge premises boasts a large selection of mechanical parts, panels, tyres and glass. Most makes and models are available on site, and if we don't have it, our trusted staff will do their best to source what you need locally and nationwide. So come in and see the team, or just give us a call and save time and money. Hurst Auto Dismantlers, 343 0099. You're right, mate. Can you hear me? 
Hey you, can you hear me? Can you help me? I need you to call 111 for an ambulance. If an accident happens and you didn't know what to do, prepare for what could be the longest wait of your life. Knowing before you need it, call 0800 Red Cross and enrol in a Red Cross first aid course today. The Home Show Spa Pool Sale is on. Hi, Mike from Four Seasons. Save $2,000 on Spa Pool 947 with all the features. Spas from just 5499 with savings up to 4000 Home Show Sale on now at Four Seasons Home and Leisure, Tower Junction Mega Centre. Have you seen something you like? You can purchase a copy of CTV's own shows so you can watch them again and again. So give us a call on 3777-033 and order a copy today. G'day, this is Fletch, your presenter of the TV show Classic Restos. It's the show where it's your chance to see completed restorations being shown, driven and enjoyed. With the week at an end, here's a preview of the upcoming weekend's sporting action. Kieran Reid makes his return to the Crusaders lineup for their match against the Cheetahs early Sunday morning. Reid, who left the field early in the Crusaders' loss to the Hurricanes with a head knock, missed last weekend's win over the Lions, but will this week make his return as he comes in for the injured Luke Whitelock. Other changes to the team see some rotation in the lineup as Corey Flynn returns to the starting 15, while Nepo Laulala will start at tight head prop ahead of Owen Franks, who moves into the bench. The other change sees Willie Hines start at halfback with Andy Ellis on the bench. A win this weekend would see the Crusaders move ahead of the Hurricanes and Blues in the New Zealand Conference and put them close to a spot in the top six. With the Chiefs waiting in Hamilton for Canterbury next weekend, it's all the more reason for the boys to get the win and carry a good run of form into their match against the defending champs. For the Insomniac Crusaders fans, the match kicks off at 3.05 Sunday morning. Still with rugby and Canterbury NPC coach Scott Robertson is expected to make a decision over his future at the end of the month. Robertson confirmed he's considering a move to French club Beeritz after being offered a contract of several seasons. Robertson guided Canterbury to their sixth consecutive provincial title in his first season as head coach. The mainland tactics will be hoping their week off can help them get back in the win column when they travel to Auckland to take on the Northern Mystics. After grabbing their first win against the Central Pulse, the tactics were soon brought back to reality as they backed up the win with a thumping at the hands of the Melbourne Vixens. The Mystics sit just one spot above the bottom of the table tactics, who have a great chance to avoid the wooden spoon with a win. The match gets underway on Sunday at 7.20. And finally tonight, the Canterbury Rams are in action tomorrow night when they take on the Nelson Giants in Nelson. The Rams made their return to the National Basketball League on Sunday when they went down to a strong Wellington Saints side. Tip-off in Nelson is at 7 o'clock. You're up to date with the latest in local sport. I'm Gordon Finlater for CTV Sport. If you're driving around the central city, CTV's traffic update will assist you navigating the repairs taking place. Hello travellers, hopefully your journeys through the central city are going smoothly. Keep watching these daily updates for further hints and tips. Good news today, Park Terrace has reopened to two-way traffic between Kilmore and Salisbury streets. You can now go north on Park Terrace from Kilmore. Park Terrace remains restricted to southbound traffic only between Kilmore and Armagh Streets. To access Park Terrace northbound from Armagh Street, turn right into Cranmer Square and then left onto Kilmore. So if you're stuck in a jam on Montreal Street, remember Park Terrace is now another option to get home quicker. Stay tuned this week for more updates on what's happening with the Central City Roads. And in the meantime, visit the Transport for Christchurch website. 
And just before we come to your regional weather, a wee reminder that we'll be changing the music for the weather and you can choose it. Visit our Facebook page or send us an email with your recommendation for the weather and then check in again next week to see if you've been successful. All right, let's check out the regional weather. Good evening Canterbury, here's your regional weather for your Friday. First up in South Canterbury, Timaru, Tamuka and Geraldine, 14. Next up in Ashburton and Methven, 14. No change in Rakaia, 14. And as we take a look at Darfield, Leeston and Ralston, 14. And into the centre, Lincoln, 14 and Christchurch, 14. Over in Akaroa, much the same, 14. And crossing the Waimakariri River, Kaipoi, Rangiora and Cheviot, 14. Moving north into the Hurunui district, Colford and Hanwha Springs, 14, and Cheviot, 14 as well. And Kaikoura had the low of the region on 13. Looking towards Saturday in Timaru, rain in the morning easing during the afternoon with fresh colder southwesterly winds. Tonight's low 10, tomorrow's high 13. In Ashburton, a cloudy and cold Saturday in store with rain during the day but easing by the evening. Tonight's low 10, tomorrow's high 13. Church, chilly and damp for your Saturday also with outbreaks of rain all day and a fresh southwesterly breeze. Tonight's low 10, tomorrow's high 14. Kay colder, cloud increasing during the morning and rain developing during the afternoon with colder southerlies freshening the air. Tonight's low 10, tomorrow's high 15. In Tamuka and Geraldine, a high of 13 with rain for most parts of the day. Methven and Rakai expect rain with a low of 10 and a high of 13. Darfield and Leeston, a bit warmer, high of 14 and a low of 10. Ralston and Lincoln, a high of 14 and a low of 10. Canterbury expect a high of 14 and rain. Same in Ambly, a high of 14 and a low of 10. Then up the top in Culverton and Hanmer Springs, a high of 14 and a low of 10 with rain all day. Looking ahead for Canterbury, cloudy and cold on Sunday with drizzle patches, southwesterly winds dying out and northeasterlies developing. Cloudy on Monday with northeasterlies freshening and periods of rain developing during the afternoon, then clearing at night. Cloudy on Tuesday with a few drizzle patches possible, moderate northeasterlies and rain developing at night. Cloudy and becoming cold on Wednesday with periods of rain, fresh gusty southwesterlies. Mostly cloudy and cold on Thursday, but dry southerly winds dying out. And that's all for your regional weather this week. Enjoy your weekend. That's CTV News for Friday and the week. I'm Grant Mangan. Good night. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.